Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Exeek here again today to bring you the first episode of Let's Play Rogue Legacy Patched. So first of all, I'm going to delete one of my current profiles, and I do not know how to do that. Okay, just the Y button here. And what do I? Why am I starting a new game here? What's going on? Well, apparently there has been a patch that added a new class, five new bosses, so like 20 or so new rooms, tons and tons of stuff. So I decided I'd start over from the beginning and maybe make my way up to like new game plus three or something. So I will be doing that all on camera, or at least mostly on camera. I do not really know so far, but I do want to see all the new content and I'm not sure where that content comes from and where it goes or how to get to it. So it's kind of a blind patch to Let's Play, I guess you could say. I guess I don't actually need to be all that cautious here, I don't even have health, and the money I get does not count for anything, so I have to give my small amount of OCD, OCD born of commenters yelling at me for not breaking everything, and just keep going. Keep on going and enjoy myself, because, you know, it's cool to cause a cozy condition, because that's what we create and that'd be our mission. It's this kind of shit happens every day. Woke up around 2 in the morning, did a lot of coke, stretching and yawning, went to the bathroom to wash up. <laughs> Fucking mindless self-indulgence. Um, it, it sounds like I might be talking about the action of mindless self-indulgence there. I guarantee you that is not the case. Damn, no money in the first room. And that's the only easy money in the game, too. They've also um, bounced a bit of the game to make it a tiny bit more accessible later on but I'm not sure how much of that actually went on, so... So, gonna want to avoid this guy, and I already have 100 gold, which is a fair amount, but if possible, I'd like over 1,000 on this first run. Although it's almost more efficient to just die on the first run, and probably more efficient not to kill that guy. Hey! 10 gold. What do you know, Joe? You're such a schmo. You fucking hoe, I guess. Um, I don't trust myself to actually do this, and I don't want to get the fairy chest. I'd rather just not take damage at the moment. So I'm gonna move on up here instead. Yeah. There was a chance that it was... that it was money. I wanted to try. I wanted to try and to try and to try and to... Ow, try! I swear I hit the jump button there, motherfuckers. Okay. Perfect! One of those games where holding the jump button makes you jump considerably higher. Always gotta remember that shit. Oh, come on. Are you fucking kid? How am I supposed to... How am I supposed to jump the gun here? There we go. Unfortunately, all that money is pretty much inaccessible unless I want to take a ton of damage, which I guess I do. Mostly because I'm an idiot, I think, but... Ah, uh, already not doing so well. Only at 180 gold, which really is not ideal. And I am hating this room. Especially as underpowered as I am right now, I'd really like to be able to take these guys out in one hit. Okay, I'm getting the fuck out of there. 15 damage means I only have a tiny bit left. Maybe I can find the boss room in time. Wow, my mind parsed that just in fucking time to dodge, but apparently not the next hit. So, death number one. If you are new to this series and join me for something else, you might not know this, but the deaths don't really matter because that is how you improve in this game. So I will go with this flexible ass knave. Unlock the smithy. Unlock a health upgrade, unlock the knight. And I'm gonna go for the physical tree first, just because it's so much easier to make progress in the game if you do that. The smithy can of course sell you new equipment, which improves all your stats, but I cannot currently afford any of his equipment to improve any of my stats. Although I might go ahead and buy the sword as quickly as possible. It sucks that I had to waste so much money there. Well, late game, that isn't that much money, but early game, it's quite a bit of money. And I know a lot of you are probably going to be wanting, like, a magic playthrough, but I tried for that, and I just could not deal with the goddamn magic. It didn't work out too well for me. When I tried. And I tried. I did try. And I tried. 
I just couldn't get any satisfaction. I sing that song a lot when I'm playing this game. Probably because it's a very distracting game and I can't think of what else to do that was the most pathetic life ever. My god. Now I'm a bit embarrassed. I can at least be a barbarian. Barbarians have a lot of health, making them very suitable for early game. Of course, they for some reason have slightly lower damage, which is a bit counterintuitive to anybody who's played any fantasy games at all. Especially the ones that have, like, the goddamn same ass classes that every other game has. Barbarians are supposed to not only be tanky, but high damage as well, I think. Yeah, they're, they're like the home of the D8. It's the only place in D&D where you actually fucking use a D8. Well, don't correct me, guys. I know you're typing your fucking correcting comments right now. Being like, actually, you can use a polearm with a wizard, like, high level to fucking do D8 damage. Or a sorcerer or something. Yeah, see what I mean? Three hits on those guys? Goddamn bullshit is what that is. Goddamn bullshit on those three hits. I'm calling it now. Pardon me, boys. Is this the Chattanooga Choo Choo? Track 49 or 99? I always forget what track the Chattanooga Choo Choo is. Allow me to be silent for a tiny bit. Ah, oh, fuck it. I lost. I tried. I tried and I failed, motherfuckers. You can't ask me for any more than that. Well, you can, but it's kind of unreasonable. I guess you could ask me for more than that if, like, the fate of the world depended on it, because it'd be kind of reasonable to expect me to succeed then, or to want me to, or to place some rather high hopes on my shoulders. Let's put it that way, at the very least. Damn, thank you for those invincibility frames. I'm going to avoid fighting those whenever I have the opportunity to. And again, I'm going to want to try for a thousand, but I haven't really improved myself in any way that makes getting a thousand easier yet. So I guess it's just time for me to move on. I can't believe I just jumped into that fucker. There we go. Wanted to take care of it before things got out of hand there. I'm going to not even read any of the journals. As far as I can tell, there's no real point to it, unless that's how you unlock the new bosses in this game. But, I don't know, and I found the boss! I was actually hoping more for money, yeah. Money. Money, 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 oh. Oh. No, I just died. I was really hoping for the extra money in that chest, but you know, McRibs are the fucking bane of my existence. If you watched my last series, you would know. So I think I will go with this bald paladin for now. And I have 600 gold. I think what I want to do is get the armor. Get the smith. Yes, okay, I know I got the smith. Get the enchantress as well. And then I should just not have enough money to get the double jump and the next level of sword. Kinda sucks, but 250, and then I have 110 left, which I might as well go and spend at the manor. If I can actually afford anything, that is. 160, 110, I can get mana up times one. You know, just for the sake of making my castle look all nice and shit, I will go ahead and do that. No, no, fuck you, Enchantress. I don't care about your shit. I got my sword and I got my orange crush. So as the improved paladin, I actually do have this shield right here, which four mana can absorb hits, and I can also turn into a tanuki, which does damage to everybody around me, or into a statue. It's a, it's a reference to a Mario and the tanukis, which is why I said tanuki there. These things are so fucking tanky for the early game. At this point, I should be reasonably expecting to kill most things in one hit, especially those wizards, but maybe not these massive armored knights. There we go. So the statue can actually do damage to enemies who touch me, but costs quite a bit of, um, of MP. Okay, 
so I'm fighting these guys already, which I wasn't really expecting. And he's gonna just fire, like, all the fire at me right now. I could have, of course, used the shield to block that, as I just did twice. And killed one of them. Killed the other, and there we go. I get a special chest, and this just glitches out and hangs out directly in the air. Fortunately, it doesn't damage me, or else I could have been in a bit of trouble there. Those guys kind of used to be the bane of my existence. Then I realized you just kind of have to rush them down and use abilities to kill them, which by the end of my last series, I was actually getting better at using abilities. Ah, see, I was right to kill everything. 100 extra gold there. 100 goddamn extra gold, and the blood stuff is real good. It gives you, um, well, it's really good early game anyways. It gives you HP for kills. The best type of HP to get. I'd take that in real life, too. Okay. Was there anything useful in there? A bunch of doors? I'm going to avoid it for now. Because that seems real scary. If you ask me, I think you should be able to kill the pictures off the walls, even if they're not mimics or whatever they are. Doombuses. Oh, shit. Oh, there's no fucking way. Fairy chests are pretty much inaccessible until you get some runes hanging out. And even as you get further in the same level, it is actually harder to kill enemies, so these guys, which I said should be killed in one hit, are now taking two hits because they are slightly further in the level one dungeon. There we go. Who else is in here? Anybody? Everybody? Everybody, everybody, everybody. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Again, just for a second, my mind couldn't quite understand what I was seeing there. Common thing to happen in in this game. You kind of walk into a room and you're like, sorry, what's this now? And then everything starts moving. Which is better than everything moving right away to kill you, so, you know, no complaints here. Well, except, yeah, complaints, because complaining be what I do. Wow, almost took damage there, like, all the ways possible. No, those guys are real tough if you, um, if you don't have any runes or extra health. And I don't think I could beat them with my current health, especially considering they probably do 30 to 40 damage per hit. And when you kill one, the other one starts firing super fast. And just in time for breakfast. How about you, like, come down here? Ow. And I kill you both. Seems like a decent arrangement, really. Got the gold. I'm pretty sure gold and items don't despawn as long as you stay in the same room. There we go. Kill these for some extra gold. There's always a chance of getting a hundred in there. And maybe this is the way up so I can get some extra health. Indeed it is. Whoa. I don't want to deal with that shit. Probably should have actually picked up that extra MP. Can I deal with this shit, though? I'm wondering if I can just snag that, um, that treasure chest, because it will be a big one. Um, no, okay. And I almost died in the attempt, so probably best to just avoid it. Now that I'm at 9 health, my only real hope, like, what I want to do is just get to the get to the boss room and not to the boss because I have no chance of beating the boss with this little health at the moment. At the Satchmo, I know people could people could beat it with like absolutely no health, but I am unfortunately not one of those people. Pretty sure this game has speedruns going on. I wouldn't doubt it anyway. It seems like a really fun to speedrun game. I, I, I would I would do races of this. This is it's a good game. It's, it's a good game, guys. It's a good game. You gotta understand how good this game is. Mmm, yeah. Umlaut. I could tell that was an enemy by the fact that it was just hanging out inside that bookshelf. It's how I generally... Oh! God damn! God damn, damn, damn. Oh, well, at least I got a decent amount of money there. So I will actually go ahead and, oh, okay, I was going to quit right here and end the episode, but I have to go with Gigantism. Gigantism, some extra damage, upgrade my Barbarian, 
so I can use Fusro Da. Um, and then also, I don't want to unlock. I want to unlock the Shinobi, but I also want to. Ah, oh, that's like almost all my money. Five. Okay, I'm gonna unlock the Shinobi, and then I'm going to use the extra money in order to unlock the first rune, and I think I want double jump more than I want the dash. So, by the way, every time you buy anything in this game, everything else gets more expensive. It's not an entirely true rule, but it holds true most of the time. Like, um, it isn't like if you buy a sword, all the runes become more expensive, but if you buy a rune, all the rest of the runes that you buy from then on become more expensive. This is gonna be a real tough room for me to dodge. Yeah, so apparently I'm just gonna take damage there. It's alright though, I should be able to heal that up fairly shortly. One great thing about Gigantism is it becomes really easy to actually kill everything. Because you have such long range on your attack. And soon I'll be using Shinobis, which um, don't crit ever, but right now I don't have any bonuses to crit and do super high damage. It is very, very useful. So for now, I'll just head into here. Totes, totes worth it. Remember, I actually do have a block. I'm saying this as much to myself as to you, so I don't have to dodge everything, but I would rather not waste all my MP. And also, I have a downwards attack, which lets me bounce on people's heads, but... That is for later. For later hosens. No, goddamn, so close to getting that, and yet so far away. Extra 20 gold there. Um, do I want a chance of tripling my money? Yes, I will indeed do that, because I don't have much to lose right now. Ah, uh, whatever. I said I only lost 100, and I had the chance of getting 300 or 400, I forget exactly, but... It was a worthwhile risk, I would say. But what do I know about risk? Um... Probably a fair amount, like I can at least define what risk is. Not that I really feel like defining what risk is right now, because I'm playing a fucking video game, I'm not playing like Let's Play Dictionary. I did enough of that when I was like eight. Our first computer um that I ever had was when I was six, I think, or even even younger maybe, I don't know. I do have the double jump here, so I might be able to do this. Also, I have larger feet, so I have a larger area in which I can stand, which is a pretty huge advantage. And an extra vault rune for the sword is nothing to scoff at. Oh, I always hate spike damage because it scales with your HP. Ow. Another chance for me to give up money. Really, I've never seen two of these in one um, spawn before. Oh well, gave up a bunch of my money again. I don't feel like going back up there with the spike ball that's gonna kill me. And I definitely don't feel like dealing with that fucker. That is an example of a higher level enemy showing up earlier in the game. Unfortunately, Gigantism sometimes makes it real fucking hard to dodge. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed episode one. I'm sorry there was no new content yet, but I can't help that. So I will see you guys next time. Apparently, I just went to the credits. But anyways, later.